Dr. Wolf Peterson, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you very well. Yeah. So can you tell a, a little bit of what you're doing? This is a double bundle ACL with a meniscal tear that you're repairing, are you? Yes, I, this is a, I have uh, already done a meniscal repair on the lateral side. Um, and on the medial side, uh, it is the, the ACL was absent. He has a 3 plus po uh, p um, uh, Lachmann test and uh, double plus pivot shift was highly unstable and he has a he, ha he has a bucket handle tear on the middle side and I have already applied a fast fix in the posterior horn and now I continue with the uh, um, outside in sutures in the anterior horn. Okay, so you so have a fast fix repair of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. So can you pull the needle back? What the is needle. this needle that you are using, uh, Dr. Peterson? Is this a standard hypodermic needle? It's or a any standard solution? needle. Um, someone must help me. What kind of needle is this? What size? I don't know. It's an 18 gauge. Okay, the standard 18 gauge. It was a big, needle. big one. Can somebody help me to hold the scope, please? And uh, another one, that bo both things. So Dr. Peterson, if I understand you correctly, you have already uh, put uh, the fast fix device in the posterior horn, have you? Yes. Or I applied it already. Okay. How many anchors have you used in the posterior horn? Can you, ch uh, I'm sorry? How many fast fixes have you used in the posterior horn? Two, I will use another one maybe later. Okay. Um, can you uh, make? Can you turn the shaver on? Shaver. I need the shaver. Okay. Another one of this outside in things. Yes, sir. This outside in. The, the cannula, cannula and suture material. So I'll just ask a quick question to the panel. Uh, I think how many ten more minutes. I think. I, I sh just show I mean one. These days we are moving towards one more suture. Meniscal preservation. Now, Ravi Gupta, do you always do a meniscal repair? That would make sense, right? An ACL tear? When it is repairable. Okay. And what are your criteria? Quick criteria for that. Uh, I prefer red red zone. Okay. So do you think a tear of this sort would fall in that criteria? It, it looks little more towards the white one. Okay. But he knows better who is operating there. He must have probed it and seen it. Okay. So, Sean, your views on Outside this? Outside in the uh, suture. Uh, hmm? I do. I try and preserve all meniscus. Uh, Almost the there. only thing I would question is whether you can actually reduce it or not. I think that's the absolute uh, fundamental thing. It's got to sit looking anatomical before you start to, to put your, su your sutures in. And I do Absolutely. exactly the same. I fixed the posterior horn with fast fix. Uh, I, I tried to put two or three on the top and okay. put one on the underside to pull it all back down. And then peripherally, with uh, I use a double barreled Tycron uh, suture kit, so not inside out at all. It, it, sorry, inside out as opposed to outside in. Okay. But I, I think you've got to try and preserve as much meniscus as possible. True. So we have a very interesting meniscus session coming up. So all the uh, people who are interested to learn the art of meniscal repair okay. can attend that. I think further details would be available with this within a few stall. Uh, there are broadly three types of meniscal repairs that you can possibly do. Fast can fix you hold refers it? to an all-inside method of fixation. And uh, right now, I think Dr. Wolf Peterson is doing an outside in. Dr. Wolf, you are on. I mean, please feel free to uh, speak in between. I think you've got to be honest with your patient, though, if you're planning on doing a meniscal repair. I mean, as much as it does then the other one? The rehab. And also, I tell everybody that's a 25% chance that it's going to fail. Yeah. But that means there's a 75% chance that it's going to be successful. Yes. So a glass is either half full or half empty, isn't it? I think it's important to tell, especially to the Indian patient, yes. that the chances of resurgery after meniscal repair are between 25 to 40%. And in India, resurgery is perceived as a surgeon failure rather than a failure. Can you of the pull the suture back? Especially when you do the an balloon. ACL backhandle tear, yeah. when it comes with the failure of backhandle, then surgery fails. It's, 
it's funny because in the <laughs> Okay. It's sort of reverse now give me the tending right now. Class sportsman, especially the professional player. Yeah. The professional player couldn't give a damn about the fact that his knee starts to fail when he's 35, 38, 40. Pull what the needle he wants back. to do is get back to playing the the cannula? straight away. Yes. So in needle? many respects, yeah. you take more, more meniscus out totally, in the higher out. class sportsman than you do in the lower class. Oh, that's interesting. Otherwise, the professional career will be in jeopardy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. So, Dr. Peterson, would you like to uh, elaborate on what you are doing as you are proceeding on? Can you hear us in the OT, Dr. Wolf Peterson? Uh, can the audiovisual person ensure that we are heard in the OT as well? Because we can't certainly hear anything from the OT. Can they hear us? Uh, Sam, if you are here, can you do a quick check on that? There was a beautiful meniscal repair kit devised, uh, and we used to use in Australia all the time, which basically was just a single loaded needle with a, 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 a hand-held couple of loops, and you could put in five, and the boss could put in ten outside-in sutures in the space of about five minutes. Wow. But, it, but it was reusable, and therefore the companies hated it because they made no money out of it whatsoever and you can't get hold of it anymore. Yeah. It is. Literature reported failure is uh, to the tune of 25 to 30 percent and most of them are perhaps due to poor case selection. Uh, Dr. Wolf Peterson, can yes. you hear us? Yes. Oh yes, so uh, so we'd like to know what exactly you're doing, if you can just uh, uh, speak as well uh, while operating, if that's convenient for you. Yes, yes, I can speak. Uh, I, I applied uh, the second outside in future. Yeah. And uh, I, have, I have already applied one fast fix in the posterior horn. Okay. And now I tied the knot. Yeah. Uh, can the camera person show a slightly bigger external picture so that we have a better idea of what you are doing? A 50% inside and a 50% outside picture. Uh, here am I not? That's great, thank you. Can I get a pro, please? Dr. Wolf, yeah. what is the duration of injury in this case? Duration? How old is the injury? Oh, I don't know exactly. Doc Dr. Prati, can you... Five years old. Uh, Five okay. Years. So it looks quite it, old. Actually. It seems not to be well reduced, but if you put load on the joint, the meniscus is reduced. So uh, I will not do any more sutures here to reduce the meniscus. Okay. And I will continue with the um, with the tunnels. I have already debrided uh, the. ACL remnants, there was almost no ACL uh, in this joint. Okay. And now, and what I did, I did a little notch plasty because there were, it was a quite narrow notch and um, the, there were some notch ossifieds. So now we have a nice overview about the, yeah, the femoral uh, lateral notch wall. But if you put your scope to the anteromedial portal, you get a much better overview. Here you can see my notch plasty. Yeah. Then we go backward. I have already put one guide wire in, don't worry, because I had too much time and uh, if a surgeon is on the table, he must work somewhat. True, it's very yeah. difficult to keep an orthopedic <laughs> surgeon quiet on the table, isn't it? Uh, okay, then uh, here you can see the, the landmarks. This the f one landmark to, uh, for orientation at the femoral side is the intercondylar line here and then the cartilage border, okay. which is here. And if you, maybe you can recognize, you can see the, the old remnants of the ACL. Yes, it, it's can. a quite oval insertion. Um, it ended here. Here's the PL area and here's the AM. And as I told you in the cadaver course already, th at the transition between the 
intercondylar line and the cartilage border, there is a transition between AM insertion and PL insertion. Okay. So I'm quite happy with this position. So the I hope every that you have put, is that meant for the AM tunnel? That would be AM, yeah. Okay. I hope that you all agree. And then I would be happy to place my PM, uh, PL here. Okay, then we can start doing this. I use for, for um, ACL double bundle reconstruction and also for my uh, single bundle reconstruction, always the medial portal technique for drilling. Can you give me the um, aimer the eight millimeter with the eight millimeter offset? Okay, and then we need the drill, uh, Dr. Wolf, the drill uh, guide. In the other OT, Dr. Pratik Gupta is ready with the tunnels and the tunicate time is nearly over. So do you mind if we quickly switch back to the other OT and we'll come back to you shortly? Yes. Um, yeah, let, so let, me just, let, 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 yeah, let me just uh, take the, uh, put the, the aimer in and yeah. let's drill the K-wire and then okay. I can... So this is the K-wire for the AM portal, isn't it? Yeah. And can you see how, how much the knee is flexed? Yes, we can. It's 110 maybe. Can you see it? Okay, then drill please. Drill. Okay. Yeah, I can feel it. Okay, then out. Okay. Um, then you can go on. I and now I use a 4.5 millimeter drill. Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. So I think uh, you please go ahead. We'll just come yeah. back to you in a moment after seeing the tunnels made by the other surgeon. Can you hear me in the auditorium? Yeah, Wolf, we can hear you okay. as well. Now I continue with the femoral tunnel. Yeah, if we can have the inside picture. We have a also. specific aimer for that. An aimer, an offset aimer with a pin. In this case, I use a 9 millimeter offset. The patient is uh, 179 centimeters tall. And I put the pin into this uh, hole of the AM tunnel. And then... Yeah. So you like to keep the slot facing towards you? I'm sorry? Uh, you yeah. can use this aimer in any direction, so yes. you would like yes. to keep the slot facing towards you straight. Yes, if your knee is, uh, drill please, if your knee is flexed more than 110 degrees, that should be okay. All the way through, thank you. No, 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 let the uh, drill guy drill in please. Ah, yeah, go, oh, go out, go out, sorry. <laughs> go out, okay. Now we can check the position. You can see here my old AM tunnel. Yeah. This is the old insertion. And I think, That's a very I good hope you all tunnel. agree, but I think we are quite in the middle of the PL insertion. True, true. It's a very right? nice PL tunnel. Okay. Uh, any idea how, how long this tunnel is? Uh, no, I, but I will measure it later. It wouldn't matter. So I, I will now drill um, the, the, the PL tunnel with a 4.5 drill. Take the 4.5 drill, please. But first the, uh, first the guide wire, please. So does the panel also believe in double bundle ACL reconstructions? How many Wait, of you have double guide bundle wire. ACL <laughs> reconstructions? <laughs> Professor Vinod, I know, does a fair bit. Uh, Dr. Ravi, do you do a double bundle? No, no? I don't. Uh, Sundar, do you? Uh, I do, I do the, if the criteria are met. Sorry? If the criteria uh, are like the, the, the criteria are met, through. you would do. Yeah, I do uh, Sean, do you that do a double bundle? All the way through. There no, no, no. There's a role for it, but I, you know, one of yeah, the biggest inside. advocates in the UK does them in less than 10% of his practice. Okay. And the argument there is if he oh. does them in less than 10% oh. of his practice, why does he do them oh. at all? You know, is he doing a substandard fixation of okay. the other 90%? Out. So I, I out. No, no, not out. Single. This is machine, not only the machine. Uh, when would you do For a double forward? bundle Move uh, forward. construction? You see, in my practice, uh, around 20% yeah. is double bundle. Machine. And the Selection is basically okay. based on the high demand fit. 4.5 drill. And uh, do you like to measure the footprints as well uh, to see if they would satisfy, they would take double bundles, any criteria of that sort? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, once you prepare that, I check if there should be enough space there. And uh, I generally customize the graph according to the footprint. Shaver. How much space do you think is enough? 
Can you switch? On Shaver? Minimum I move around 7 and 5 means 11 and 3, 14 minimum. 14 minimum. Okay. So that, that's important to know rather than just straight away jumping on the double bundle bandwagon. Uh, you should have sufficient space in the femur and the tibia to accommodate the twin tunnels. Yeah, because AM less than 6 is a problem, PL less than 5 is a problem. So you must have adequate space where you can put this and at least 2 3 mm bone in between has to be there. Yeah, Dr. Wolf, please continue. We can see very nice tunnels. The owl's eyes are very clearly visible. Okay. And now I measure the length of the tunnels. Yeah. Knee is flexed. Just ask you. Uh, what is the angle of knee flexion you are working in? 110, 110. 110, okay. And now this is 34. Yeah, the AM1, okay. So AM you can ask him directly. Is it uh, uh, this uh, 110? 33, uh, 32. Same for AM and PL? Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Wolf, there's a question from the audience. Yes. Uh, do you use the same angle of knee flexion for both the tunnels or does it differ for the AM yes. and the PL? Yes, I do. Same angle. Same angle. No shaver. Okay, uh, how large are the grafts? And now I need the graft diameter. Maybe can you give me the guide wire again? And then the 5.5 .5 drill. Okay, now uh, I drill the tunnels. Are they doing a tripling of both the graphs? Or? Uh, uh, Dr. Wolf, yes? the audience would like to know and the panel would also like to know how you have prepared your graphs for the AM and the PL. Can you quickly uh, show the graphs uh, for both the tunnels? Yes. It was, a, it was one semitendinosus graft. It okay. length was, uh, Dr. Pratik, what, what do you think? Uh, 16, uh, 16 for AM. Yeah, it's, it's 16 for AM and the other one? 14. So it was 30 millimeter, had a, had a length of 30 millimeter. 30 millimeter MET uh. you're using for the AM. You're uh, doubling it or tripling it? I double it. Double it. And for the PL, you're using two. Bacillus? No. One graft. So you're using just one graft for both the bundles? Yes. So one semitendinous, only the semitendinous in it because uh, um, I like it to leave the gracilis tendon intact because it has some function. Okay. Can you again? This again? These tunnels are diverging tunnels. Are uh, uh, tunnels uh, are converging tunnels. Do you have a diameter, oh, graph diameter already? Graph diameter? Dr. Wolf, there's yeah. a question from the audience. Yes. Uh, how is the jig designed? Are the tunnels divergent or convergent as they exit the femur? They are uh, divergent. They're divergent. Well, let me drill this tunnel and then I yeah. can yeah. show you it. Um, because, the, because the aimer is divergent. Okay. Maybe, uh, may, yeah. It's hard to see. It's hard to. A lot of elite athletes. Do you it's do hard to see from the medial side. Athletes? Sorry. It's hard to see from the medial side that these tunnels are divergent. But yeah, uh, maybe we take your word for it. The jig yeah. is designed in such a way that they are divergent. But the aimer gives you in divergent direction of the but tunnel. Do you use double bundle for all your elite athletes since you treat a fair amount of them? No, um, for my elite athletes I do quadriceps tendon. Can you the uh, quadriceps tendon? Yes. Okay. So what are your selection criteria for double bundle ACL reconstruction? Tall recreative atlas, athlete. Okay. Because the, uh, the high level athletes, can you, can you change please? Uh, the so the high the level athletes get a single tunnel quadriceps tendon, is yes, it? Yes. Because uh, the all, all bone patella tendon bone, but I prefer the quadriceps tendon because, uh, yeah, of the, I think it's a little bit lower donor site morbidity. Okay. Okay. 
because the re-rupture rate of, uh, of uh, hamstring grafts is a little bit higher. You can see here, I, now I drilled uh, the tunnels with 5.5 millimeters. I, I, di I didn't get the... Uh, oh, 5 for the PL and 6 for the AM. Okay, now I will show you a trick. If the bridge is too narrow, uh, yeah. then uh, if you have two big tunnels, it, this is, in this case, this is not the case. Uh, because the bridge is uh, quite big, uh, but uh, um, if, it's, if you have a very narrow bridge and you want to prevent that the bridge breaks, then you should use dilators uh, to dilate the tunnels because you um, can achieve a much more careful tunnel um, preparation with these dilators. So you can see here, this is a six millimeter dilator. because this instrument makes not as much damage as a drill. True. That's a very it's important uh, tip that you've just passed huh? across. Okay. Can I ask you, he's got an excellent view. Uh, are you using a pump there or any form of... No, I use no pump. Uh, uh, maybe the outside camera can show it. We use only gravity. Oh, we'll take your word for it. Okay, now I'm finished with my tibia, uh, uh, um, excuse me, femoral tunnels. Do you have any questions about femoral tunnel preparation? Uh, if you turn... Both the graphs are the same size? If, uh, or if you extend the knee, your insertion moves uh, backward. Okay, then I will, I think I continue with the tibial tunnels? Yeah. Okay. Then give me the tibial guide, please. Uh, do you like to remove the tibial stump before proceeding, or are you happy with the uh, proceeding? No. I'm happy to leave as much old ACL tissue intact as possible. Then I, um, then I need the drill guide again. Okay. Yeah? Can you put it on? Yeah. Okay, this is a double bundle guide. Okay. It has two winglets, and we start always with the AM tunnel. And the landmark for the AM tunnel, we can see it here. Therefore, it's nicer to leave it intact, because this is the remnant. You can see it here. And a very good landmark for the ACL tibial um, ACL insertion is, especially the AM insertion, is the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. And um, this AMA has a little wing here. And if this wing is quite parallel to the, uh, to the lateral posterior border of the lateral meniscus, okay, then I'll push this in again. Um, then your K wire or guide wire is not too, f not too yeah, loose. Loose, yeah. Okay, drill, please. Look to the monitor. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Subs. <coughs> stop. 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 No. Ah, do you? You've not been in. Broken. Another one. Uh, Dr. Wolf, uh, can we just uh, switch for one second to the other OT? Dr. Pratik has finished with his reconstruction and he would just like to show the graft. Okay. Uh, can you just hold on for your uh, tibial? Can you please show the tibial jig once again yeah. so that uh, we understand what you're doing? All inside. No, no, no. Yeah. So, Dr. Wolf, can you hear us? Yes. Great. So, you're back live. Please proceed. And uh, please show the tibial jig more anterior. Can you give me the guide, please? The guide. The guide. Okay. 
Okay, then we take the guide again yeah. and we can measure the length or the distance between uh, PL and AM inversion. So Okay, drill the Now do we know that are you happy with the AM guide wire? Yeah. Uh, I think it's it looks okay. What? Sundar, do you use a freehand technique drill? for your double bundles or do you use ah, a no, no, no. Free Stop. Hand, free hand. Okay. freehand? Freehand. Freehand? Out. Uh, freehand for the yeah. tibial tunnel as well, Sundar? Sorry? Freehand no. for the tibial tunnel this as well? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Even if there's a convergence okay. in the uh, entry point, doesn't make Trish. a huge difference. Trish. 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 Now, what you want is a uh, larger footprint. Mm -hmm. That Trish. is the uh, ultimate aim when you do a double bundle. So, Dr. Wolf, you are ready to drill the PL tunnel. Uh, uh, can you hear us, Dr. Wolf? Yes, yeah? I can hear you. Great. Can you hold it, please? We drill the PBL tunnel now. Okay. No. Let me take, take it. So, for the benefit of the audience, the PL TPL tunnel would be more posterior than the AM1. It would. Uh, so, Darbul, you are happy with this guide wire for the PL tunnel? Mm, not so. Yeah, it looks a little more anterior than uh, what it should be, isn't it? Yes, but I will. I prefer not to change the position of the guide wire. Um, I do will. You, uh, I, I get a feeling that uh, these tunnels might collapse if you ream them. Do you get the same feeling? Yes, I. But at, at the tier build side, this is uh, we we. Yeah, in in most cases we have a conference of the tunnels. Because the uh, tubular insertion is much more narrow. Give you, can you give me the 4.5 millimeter drill? Yes, but I correct this, I, uh, this tunnel position. But uh, it is better than uh, placing a new K wire or guide wire. It's better to correct this uh, tunnel position by eccentric drilling. Okay. So even if the tunnels coalesce in the tibia, would you be very worried? I mean, uh, is it uh, less of a consequence compared to the femur? So now I drill. Then I take the guide wire again. And now you can give me the six millimeter. You can see what you can do is. Yeah, you're, you're you moving can it posteriorly perhaps. Yes. And then. I drill again and then my tibial tunnel moves very closely to the PCL. So I think, and you, uh, maybe can you give me a probe? What was the footprint length? Uh, did you measure the it tibial footprint before proceeding on? Uh, no, not norm normally not. But you know, where we are, these fibers here are the, this is the root of the lateral meniscus. Yeah. And the root insertion of the lateral meniscus is very close to the PL tunnel, okay. you see? Therefore, I think we are here in the right position with our PL tunnel. Huh? But of course, we will have a confluence in this case. Okay, okay this is... Yeah. So, confluence of tunnels on the TBL end is perhaps not 
as uh, much of a consequence as in the femoral end. You're happy with the confluence of the tibia? Yes. Okay, and then I take the same for the for the AM. Or maybe give me the five point zero. Five point zero. This is maybe a little bit too medial. I think first important thing is you must be sure that you have enough footprint. First thing, we should match to your uh, tunnels which you are supposed right. to prepare depending on the graft available and uh, at least 2-3 mm width should be there. Secondly, you see the, uh, uh, the wire for AM, you can, you should, uh, I don't take this uh, lateral meniscus, actually the footprint of AM bundle is very clearly seen if you see from the middle compartment side and mark it the center there. And then only probably you can go on the okay, then give me better. If you do this okay. little bit lateral in the center Five. of total, okay. then your PL comes in line and you Six, can huh? struggle a little uh. bit that the configuration is not coming. But then the we way. can correct it a little bit. You know, what's like here now? Pardon? I do it like here. Uh. Do you use a jig for this? Sir? I now I use simple jigs, simple TBL jig, which uh, you, which we all use for uh, means single bundle. But I mark, measure it, and mark Other the graphs, centers, okay. Uh, yeah. there. And then put huh? my jig the the on those points and PL drill it normally. Uh, can the camera 32. person show an enlarged outer 32. picture? 32. We mm -hmm. want to see where the TBL guide wires are coming out on the skin. This is the uh, six? Yeah, rate of frequency. Uh, maybe can you can give you me the six millimeter dilator? Please? 25% inside for a short while. Because you see, little bit of confluence doesn't matter, but if they are too close, then uh, probably it matters. Then it become a vague uh, single bundle rather than actually the double bundle. So, then little bit one mm. Okay, then uh, a knife, please, and a hook. Your whole footprint. Then only the purpose is being served. Uh, Dr. Peterson, are you through with the tunnels and the tibia? Yes. Can we see the external landmark? Uh, can we see where the guide wires are coming of the tibia externally? The camera person needs to help Take us care. with a bigger external picture. Okay. You have outside camera, you can see the divergence of the tunnels. Yeah. One is here very close to the tibial tuberosity and one is pretty close to the medial collateral ligament. Yeah. You can see the divergence also in the intraarticular view, but of course we have a confluence in this case, but I think we are anatomically. This is a transverse meniscus ligament. Uh, this can is we the see the inside picture now? A small 25% outside and 75% inside. Uh. Lateral meniscus. 75% uh, inside picture, please, camera person. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, please Here continue, Dr. Peterson. So Here you, you can see the old fibers. Yeah, so there is the a tibial confluence here, I'm afraid, isn't it? Yes. One is like this and one is like this. And here's the entry horn of the lateral meniscus, the posterior border. Huh? Yeah. And here now is my... PL tunnel and this is my AM tunnel, the middle, because this is the anterior border of the AM tunnel. Yes, and but we have a little confluence. Okay, maybe can then I will clean it. Can you give me a, a hook or oh, retractor? Uh, yeah. And uh, a, a knife. So, what uh, fixation method you would be using for both the tunnels, uh, Dr. Peterson? Um, at, the tibia, uh, at the femoral side, I will use uh, extracortical fixation. I use a flip tech, okay. which is uh, like an endo button. And at the femoral side, uh, at the tibial side, uh, I use the interference screw, bioresorbable, the mega fix screw. And um, then you can use either two buttons to do a backup fixation or you can uh, tie a knot between uh, the two sutures over the bone bridge which we have here at the tibial side. Now I clear, what I'm doing now is I clear the tunnel entrance. Do you have a rasp? 
for me. Are the graphs ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then uh, the rasp for here. Raspatorium. A raspatorium? A raspatorium? Rasp. And then, huh? Pure it? No. no, it's not so good, but. So can I have a show of hands in the audience how many uh, do a double bundle ACL reconstruction? So nobody does a double bundle ACL reconstruction in the all? Wonderful. So I, I'm sure you are uh, benefiting a lot from this demonstration in that case. I think you should know the criteria. Yeah. So can you, enum uh, can you enumerate the criteria for a double bundle ACL reconstruction? They are very limited criteria. So can you enumerate what, uh, according to you, should be the criteria? No, uh, we, I do, we do through the pre-op MRI measurements through the typical footprint. We have okay. a study on the Indian population also. And uh, we, we always oh, keep oh. it as a 14 mm is the minimal. Still 14 to 16 mm is the gray zone. And uh, under, uh, 17 okay. is the minimum. Some, 17, 17 is the minimum I do. Double bundle reconstruction. For the femur as well as for the TPM? Yes, as well as the TPM. So your radiologist is able to tell you the footprint yes. size? Yes, yes, we can measure this. You're a very good radiologist. Because we have only musculoskeletal radiologists. Oh. Oh, we'd be lucky if our radiologist tells if the ACL is torn or not. <laughs> the other criteria is that uh, it should not be done in adolescent. It should not be the part of multiligament injuries. It no. should be adequate. And uh, even the graft should be adequate. And don't feel uh, means ashamed if you have to postpone even when a scope and change. You see, badly done double bundle is worse than well done single bundle. So means it, it has to be actually uh, sometime change the decision uh, even uh, on table. Sean, have you ever had the unfortunate situation of revising a double bundle done for whatever reasons? I mean, if Okay. Uh, I no, don't a do double know, bundle done nobody, by somebody else. And, uh, I think then really put this in the uh, in the guide wire. Nobody in our part of the world doesn't. Uh, Cut it. The, as I say, the the advocates of them in the UK are few and far between. The, the general opinion is that double bundle double the trouble. So, you know, as you say, a well done single bundle is equally as good as a badly, uh, certainly far better than a badly done double bundle. Dr. Nag, have you come across a situation where you've had to revise somebody else's or your own double bundle? Okay. Uh, yes. Yes? How difficult or how easy it is uh, to revise it? Uh, no, as expectations because uh, it has to be, I mean, I prefer... Can you close it? Yes, can you make a note? Yeah. yeah. Can, can you please speak a little into the mic so that all of us can hear you? Yeah. Huh? Double bundle, I mean, yeah. uh, if it fails and one has uh, to, you know, I mean, uh, revise yeah. it, like then I think there's a trouble that uh, you know you'll have a lot of uh, hmm. uh, empty spaces and uh, you'll have uh, no choice. I mean, uh, whatever you decide, a single or double in a revision, then because those uh, tunnels or uh, sockets which has been you know made and failed now will come on your way. That means you are shortage of uh, you know bone. So uh, I mean, just all those uh, uh, tunnels will be there. So first stage is uh, you know you have to fill up those graphs, and once they heal, then you know you can think about either single or double, and uh, the graph choice is for you to decide. So how did you revise the femoral tunnel, sir? I mean, since two holes are already there in the femur, did you do a medial portal or a trans tibial or an outside in? Uh, you, you mean uh, bone grafting? Uh, no, uh, the, the revision of a double bundle, uh, suppose if a... Yeah, yeah, that's what I say. The first stage is uh, you clear the joint and... Okay, you uh, do a bone grafting first. You do yes, always do a yes, staged manner. Yes, okay. two staged manner. Okay. 
make an incision. These two failures, but they were actually partial failures of PL bundle in Good both skin. patients. So I just revised uh, uh, PL. AM was okay and patient was having some fever and the PL was not working. So I got an opportunity to revise two patients out my own patients. They were on my patients. <laughs> and uh, probably the reason was we, we did a CT study of these footprints post -op, and these both PLs were actually tending grass even if still there is a tendency to make PL higher little bit higher than its actual position even by the jigs also so still the things are not very perfect and uh, we still have to keep our efforts to make it more and more accurate yeah I took uh, from other sides MET and make it little bit wide. Okay, give me the... Yeah, he, no, he actually, he, went uh, to this, uh, train, he was selected for this uh, Defense Academy training. And during that training, he jumping and all high stimulus activity, he got trauma again. Both were actually traumatized. And uh, they were having not that uh, draw, but there was some fever tendency. And on MRI, I find that probably this... Uh, Here's the PL bundle, it's ready. AM was okay, PL was not functional and just I revised that and uh, things were okay. Uh, Dr. Wolf, uh, you have just passed the suture leader in the PL oh. tunnel or the Where AM is? bundle? Dr. Wolf, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah, so uh, can you just take us through, uh, we were discussing uh, the merits and the demerits of double bundle while you were passing your sutures. So this is the suture through the PL tunnel or the AM tunnel? This is the PL. This is the PL, okay. Can you just uh, uh, trace it down to where it goes in the femur? You see, in double bundle, always pass oh, yes. the PL first. Now we can see it much more clearly. So the medial portal gives a far better view, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Please continue. Dr. Yes. Nag, about, uh, I have to wait a little bit for the graft. Failure of uh, double bundle and then putting a bone graft, you're putting a strut bone graft inside and it may heal, may not heal, get resolved. How long will you wait before you do a revision ACR? Bone grafting, you have to be very careful because uh, what I do is I take those, uh, uh, for we, we use those different diameters, uh, uh, you know, mosaic plasti, those cylindrical graft wicks. Then I pack them there. I agree, it's very difficult. Sometimes you'll find that the peg is oh, loose. Man. Yeah. But don't get scared. Slightly. Oh, the what's the problem? Pack them mm. And wait for the healing. The healing takes very long time. Yeah. In the MRI will show in a loose Let bone pieces as if in the tunnel. So I wait for you know, something more than four or five months. Then I you know, uh, do this uh, revision. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Wolf, so what are you doing next? You are passing the suture through the... Uh, AM bundle now? Is that jetzt? Das muss doch irgendwie andersrum sein hier. It's very safe to say that there's not there's n there's no other 2.7 centimeters of tissue in the body that is talked about and written yeah. about <laughs> as much as the ACL. True. And what I we will do is say in 10 that. years time oh, I suspect we'll be sat shy, here man. all doing okay. bone patella tendon bone yeah. again. Yeah. The wheel has spun a full circle. I mean, there are recent adverse it's reports completely wrong. Uh, in the Finnish registry of a higher rate of uh, revisions in an AM bundle uh, ACL than a transtibial ACL. So recently, a lot of uh, literature is coming. And then we'll go back to the same problem of early accelerated osteoarthritis developing yeah. because we're putting in too stiff a graft. And, and in a way, uh, the reconstruction of the short lateral ligament is a vindication of the Macintosh procedure of the... Uh, I was saying this to Richard Parkinson the other day. I think somebody should oh, sit down never and again. actually apologize to David Dandy because yeah. for years he advocated using a Macintosh. Macintosh. And, and everybody moved away from it and said that he was wrong and old-fashioned and now everybody's swinging back to using a, yeah. an augmentation. So that's what the industry can do to you. There are so many fancy ways of so reconstructing what is this? the PL. anterolateral ligament that it is suddenly AM. very 84? fashionable to do it. And no matter which Market. way we've done it, no matter what okay. technique, and what graft you've taken, as yet nothing has influenced the natural history of the knee following an ACL injury. And it was quite interesting. I had a brief stint with a group of French surgeons in Lyon 
and uh, their preferred method of acl reconstruction is the btb graft then they do the outside end no 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 and uh, something similar to what dr bhasin yeah, showed uh, they do a snap fit, uh, bone plug in the femur and they just use a single screw in the patella yeah. oh, so in, in the tibia so when i just saw the procedure i was i was just asking them what do you do for your athletes and uh, dr david dijo told me that this guy is a olympic level javelin thrower for france so this is what we do for our athletes so no fixation in the femur and just one single screw in the tibia a, a very a well done press fit uh, bone plug so that's what the french people do and uh, an even more interesting technique of short lateral ligament reconstruction was demonstrated by dr philippe nere uh, the hole in the patellar plug was used to thread a gracilis graft and uh, one limb of the graft was brought out on the lateral side and just uh, uh, stretched mm -hmm. onto the gerdes tubercle near the femur Well, Donald Shelburne still just ties his tibia over a single screw. Yeah, there's no, there's no interference screw on the tibial side. Yeah. It's, it's just a purely one single post screw, and he's done thousands. Doctor Wolf, uh, can you hear us? Uh, can you please? Yes, I can. Because we will uh, have to shortly shut off transmission, so we'd like to see you pass the graphs before we do that. Okay, I. Prepare the grafts. You can see here the AM bundle. Have you passed? And jetzt hier den Autocord rein und den anderen. Autocord und grün, meinetwegen. Yeah, Dr. Wolf, can you hear us? Are you ready to show us the graft passage? No, because the grafts are not uh, not ready. I said the grafts are not ready. Maybe the camera person can shift on to the graft preparation. We'd be interested to see how you're preparing it. Okay. This is the PL graft, right? So which suture do you use to tie the knot with in the flip tack? Normally a number one Ettibon suture, uh, uh, a one millimeter Ettibon suture. Uh, okay. One millimeter Ettibon. But we don't have it here. Okay. So for this case we take a number five Ettibon, which is okay. uh, uh, half as small as a uh, one millimeter Ettibon suture. And, mm, and but we uh, normally I, I take it twofold, but in this case I take it uh, fourfold. And I think this gives should give enough strength. Um, to hold the flip tag. Can I take the opinion of the panel? Uh, do you use uh, uh, endo button or a button kind of a device with a suture tied onto it? Are you comfortable using these kind of fixation, uh, Professor Nag? For is, uh, what's the question for me? No, uh, uh, we are just discussing with the panel. Uh, this kind of fixation uh, is uh, used quite often, and I was just asking the opinion of the panel on how comfortable they are. You please continue. Okay. Uh, well, uh, suspensory fixation is. Uh, no, uh, I meant the variable loop. The, the continuous loop is, of course, something we, which we are all used to. He would be using a flip tack. Seizure. He would be Seizure. using a suture and tying a knot. Uh, so, are you comfortable with that kind of a uh, fixation? Uh, well, I use this uh, fixed loop method. No. Because uh, in the original Carl Stowe's manual, they describe a different kind of a suture, a maybe a mercelin tape kind of a thing. He was asking for a one millimeter eti bond, which of course uh, is not very easy to catch hold of. Yeah.
think a lot of companies are jumping, you know, the original ender button came as just the, the button and you had to tie the loop separately. Yeah. And then the, the CL ender button came on and they still, from what I'm aware of, uh, the people at Smith & Nephew still don't know how that continuous loop is made. It goes out to a, an outsourced company yes. and that outsourced company will not tell them how, 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 how it is. So it's, uh, no. Everyone's no. moving onto the bandwagon such as, you know, the rigid loop but it's not, yes. it's a variable loop, and that's sutured. Nothing. And then there's the tightrope, again, that's a variable length. Yeah. But I, I'm under pressure to try other ones, but I... Okay, give me the PL bundle. The closed loop and a button for years, and I'm quite happy to stick with it. It's a very simple device to use, perhaps. I mean, it's yeah. one of the truly idiot-proof devices one can probably use. It's time-tested. You know, and if it, if it wasn't a good device, why are the likes of... Uh, Let me check if the size is it's okay. ...trying to mimic it. True. Uh, you know, the like then I need two megafix screws. And yeah. and D I need the PL bundle. <laughs> and so the Dr. measurement Dr. device for the PL bundle. Uh, Dr. Wolf Peterson, which yes. bundle would you be passing first? The PL. Okay. It's, it's purely closed. Okay. Any specific reason? Yes. Because it's difficult to see the AM, uh, uh, the PL, if the AM is uh, uh, already in. Yeah. This is a simple reason. Can you give me the measurement device uh, for the tendon diameter? Okay, can someone pull? Can someone pull the graft? Pull the fiber wire. Pull the fiber wire. Pull only the fiber wire. Yeah. I was interested in... Uh, okay, go on. Go. Pull. The concept of using quadriceps in the high and truly elite, elite athlete to prevent the yeah. morbidity that you get with a bone protein tendon or with a potential weakness that you'll get in a hamstring graft. More, 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 more. Uh, do you ever use an allograft in your high elite athlete as a first choice? Uh, Dr. The other one. There's a question for you from uh, Sean O'Brien. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Pull. Peterson? Yes? Uh, Sean wants to know if you would ever use or have you ever used allografts no. for your elite athletes? No, you must know that uh, we don't get allografts in Germany. It's very difficult. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Sorry. Stop. And what about quadriceps? Yes, quadriceps uh, I take, but as an uh, autograph. Okay. Okay, now I flip the so flip tag. Uh, do you take the quadriceps with the bone plug or without the bone plug? With bone plug. And uh, where do you keep the bone plug? At the femur side, and at the femur side, I do a press fit fixation. Press fit fixation? A new one. Outside in? New one. Oh. Now, what? Um, Dr. Peterson, is it a press fit fixation outside in? It's a press fit fixation inside the joint. Okay. Can you which make side was that? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Which side do you use the bone? Uh, pull. So you don't use okay, any screw in the femur in no. the press fit fixation? Yes, no screw. Okay. Can you give me the, the, the suture grasper? Okay. Please give me the dilator again. 
Hold it, please. Hold it. Oh, that should be okay. Okay, then the graph, please. the panel I've only ever read about it I've never seen it done and I've never certainly never done it myself of using a an Achilles tendon <laughs> no 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 the, the fiber as the pulling so Dr. Ravi have you ever heard of an Achilles tendon autograft for uh, ACL reconstruction uh, I haven't heard Pull. Achilles no? tendon Achilles tendon it's okay no? Uh, uh, about only allograft of it. Uh, I've used okay. allograft plenty of times in uh, okay. revisions in multi ligaments, but I know some people do uh, the autograft. That's okay. Uh, uh, one good. of the wildest things that I have heard uh, being used for an ACL reconstruction is the peroneus longus tendon. I mean, a group of flip? Vietnamese surgeons flip? presented a paper at a Southeast Asian meeting where th wherein they used a huge series of oh, patients, 180 odd patients, with the peroneus longus tendon. So that was quite interesting. Autograft. I haven't. And what, what was diameter graft were they achieving with that? Peroneus longus, they, they said that they could fold the peroneus longus and get an equal mm -hmm. diameter as the semi T. Cut it. Um, they claimed 7 to 8 millimeters of diameter. Okay. And they uh, had wait, pictures wait, to wait, prove wait. that with sizes and everything. So it was pretty what happened? Oh, take it off. Take it off. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. So have you this. flipped the flip tack, uh, Dr. Peterson? Have you passed both the grafts? Uh, yes. But we have a problem with the. Uh, no, no, no. We have to cut it. I don't know what happened there. Because. Uh, what's the nature of the problem, Dr. Peterson? Uh, yeah, the nature of the problem is that we pulled the whole graft out of the. Female tunnel. Oh. So, uh, do you think uh, we can uh, switch to a lecture in between and uh, maybe we'll come back to you in 10 minutes' time uh, when uh -huh. you are ready to show the entire reconstruction? Yes, the problem is uh, then we are out of our tonicate time. Um, I, I flipped the button of the, of the other graph already. Yeah. Um, so, this is a PL graph. This is quite stable. And now, what I'm now doing is the, when the AM graph. Can you? Uh? Uh, no problems. You please take your time. Uh, we'll just come back to you in uh, 10 minutes' time. Okay. We'll be through with the lecture by that time. Cut it out. Cut so, it. can the audiovisual person switch back to the uh, hall? Uh, we can stop transmission for the time being, and then we'll come back after Dr. Ravi Gupta has given his lecture. So, after seeing all these. No, no, no.